everyone and welcome to Thread Hunting with Molly, where if it doesn't scare the ever-loving crap out of you or your CEO or your sysadmin, it's probably not worth looking for. All right, so let's dig in today. We are looking for a Chrome remote code execution and we're going to be looking at its POC. That's right, practically the wet dream of every exploit kit out there. Now, let's see what we can learn, what we can find, and maybe how to hunt for some of this. All right, uh, 2020, 64, 18. Oh yes, if you're in a corporation, I'm sure you have said those letters. If not, you should check it out. All right, so. <sighs> well, all right, so because it has to do with the V8 engine, it felt kind of like a D8 engine, and well, I don't know. Let's see if luck will be a lady tonight and we can find something out. What do we know? All right, we know it's a type confusion, which means someone forgot to check something. Uh, it also means that this is part of the open source JavaScript and web assembly engine, V8. Gosh, that makes me a little thirsty. Also, impact, kind of a big one. Remote code execution from visiting a web page is freaking huge. Now the POC we're looking at does not have a sandbox escape, so it would have to be coupled with that in order to truly allow that to happen. But there are plenty of smart people uh, who apparently already did. Uh, how does it work? All right, so V8 was put in place to uh, make memory more efficient. From what I read online, developers found it did a pretty darn good job, 30, 40% uh, efficiency increase. That ain't bad. And people found out they could corrupt arrays and predictable manners, and they could get an out-of-bound read, which could lead to um, proxying of code. Or in this case, the scariest, uh, shell code execution. Quick hunt. You want to look for Chrome doing things Chrome shouldn't be doing. Uh, if I were going to run an exploit kit, I'd probably be running some sort of command line. Uh, maybe super sneaky uh, living off the land binaries even. Okay, so uh, look for stuff baseline it, you know. Chrome's going to run stuff like Chrome Helper and, you know, uh, Chrome Native Messenger, whatever. It's going to do that. But it shouldn't be running other programs that have uh, shells on them. Moving on. Show me the logs. All right, so eh, eh, this isn't as exciting as I like to tell you. All right, so we've got the PCAP of the exploit running. Yay! Yeah. But, uh, you know, since I couldn't get the exploit to run, I don't have any cool parent process relationships running, but I think we can infer that Chrome would then be spawning something it shouldn't be. But let's, let's take a little gander and, uh, I don't know, see if we can get some perspective. Now, the whole hullabaloo came up because on the 18th of February, this bug was entered into Chromium. We have evidence being used in the wild in targeted attacks. So targeted attacks sort of mean not drive-by exploits, not another emotet or trickbot spam campaign, right? This means like, oh my gosh, maybe there's a population we want to spy on. Oh my goodness, maybe it's a nation state actor. I don't know. I couldn't find the specific web page, which made me very sad. Uh, but they uh, bumped this, made this big, made the headlines, and that's why we're looking at it too. The exploit I ran um, happened to be off of Exodus Intelligence. Did a great write-up. They found the Chromium bug when it was entered. They reversed it in, I think, two to three days. Super smart cats. Okay, and they put their exploit code here. They also did a big write-up on why it happens. Now, I'll be honest, I learned a great deal, and there's still a great deal I have yet to learn. Now, if we head over to our Windows Wind box, that was supposed to be Windows 10. <laughs> so uh, let me give you some background on what you're looking at. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. All right. So first off, if you open up the POC, you're going to get those four files. Always read the readme because, well, let's be smart. Now, this is real specific on what Chrome version it was tested on. Couldn't pull down that particular Chrome version, um, which is probably why this didn't work all the way for me. But uh, try it out. Check it out. See if you can get it to run and put it in the comments. Yeah. 
Let's create, you know, let's create a thread hunting team here. I like that idea a lot. All right. You also, again, it has uh, no sandbox escape, so you have to put that in the argument. Also, you can't just open this from a folder and hope it'll run your JavaScript. You have to host it. And, well, let's be honest, I love me some Python, and they've got a great, simple HTTP server if you ever have to do this kind of thing. There we go. Um, put it in the right directory, and it'll serve it up. Okay, you run it, and you open up your console. Here is what you get out. Um, what's kind of nice is I put some extra console logs in there, kind of, yeah, kind of a dirty way to do it, but it worked. And I found out my exploit ended up failing and crashing this particular tab, um, at 258. So if we go over to 258, um, it'd be a little different because I added some extra lines. Basically, basically friends, here is where, right there, where she failed. I checked the what the address of the WASM function was, and I got zero. But what's interesting to point out here is this, all right, is after most of the exploit has already run. The proof of concept that we look at, it worked. And at this particular stage, the author is trying to get read-write on the WebAssembly code page. All right. And if we scroll down later, we start to see that they're trying to write their shell code out, which is here, by the way, if you want to take a look at it, it's also in the exploit. And then they try to write it. So most of it ran, but not all of it. Uh, issues with addresses, which would make sense if the Chrome version is a little different. Well, let's take a look at what the web traffic looked like. So here we go. So here is the JavaScript that ran. Um, I'm going to say chances are slim that your web page is going to say exploit.html. Yeah, just saying. Uh, but one thing is interesting. Uh, while I assume a targeted attack has probably got a lot of encoding going on, uh, if you can get it decoded, you're going to see a lot of calls to address places, okay, like memory address. And that's something I, I don't ever see. Uh, on other pages. So that would be something you could look for. Take a look at this PCAP. Um, you know, obviously if you see shell code somewhere, right, again, they're probably going to encode that, but maybe they're sloppy and they didn't. So you could definitely do that. And that's, that's a good thing to hunt for anyways. Okay. So bottom line, all I got was the, uh, I got it to run, but it didn't run enough to run shell code. So where does that leave us, you ask? Oh, where? Oh, where does that leave us? Well, it leads us with more research because research is the best ever. I wanted to know how long this would have been out there. I wanted to find the actual code. You know, I wanted to find the web page that was hosting it. But what I did find out is that V8 has been known as an issue for a long time. Um, so someone was doing a, uh, capture the flag. Okay. And, you know, found this looks pretty similar in some ways, um, to the proof of concept. Uh, but it might be a little different, but it does mean the V8 has been known to be vulnerable for a long time. Uh, I'll put the links down in the bottom. If you want to take a look at it, if that's, if that's a deal, um, it's kind of interesting to look at. We've got this write-up as well. Um, and this is running it on, I think, GNOME. But they popped a calculator on it, okay, using using Chrome. And they, they run through it as well, talking about the different types of arrays and, and why the exploit works. And um, basically, a lot of how these functions work together. Uh, learned a lot, still have a lot interesting, check it out. You know, I'm looking at this from a honey perspective and I'm thinking, huh, I wonder how often a JS create node, uh, is actually on or loaded by a web page. Maybe it's all the time, but you don't know until you look, um, you know, so kind of interesting to kind of get a feel for and run into and, uh, see if you can learn something from. 
So, coming back around, what do we know? It's going to be used for drive-by compromise, and shell code has to be hosted on web pages for it to work. Will that shell code be encrypted? Yeah, probably, right? Um, but you're also going to have to prepare the shell code to run. So, thank you for watching another episode of Thread Hunting with Molly. I learned that even though sometimes we hunt for things we don't understand, it never hurts to try to understand. I, I don't write exploit code. Um, I don't understand um, assembly language. But I can understand that Chrome has an issue with how it handles memory in one of its modules. I can understand that it has been seen to do remote code execution. And by studying the proof of concept, I can also get a feel for what that code would look like if I was doing an investigation. So y'all are awesome. Like, subscribe. Um, if you have better luck than me, uh, put your comments down there. You know, uh, I really think it would be pretty badass if we made a thread hunting community. Um, so anyway, till next time.